Hello all, welcome to yet another interesting story under the theme Ajadi Kamut Mahotsav story series by Mommy Show Musings. Today I'm going to introduce you to an interesting lady whom I like to call as the queen of steel nerves who has survived and succeeded just because of her strong will and determination despite the tragic situations and around her. She is the queen who has built a huge bridge but got lost under the crevices of that very same bridge which she had built. Interesting, isn't it? Come on, I'm going to introduce you to Queen Prabhavati Gupta, who has lost, got lost in the bridges which she built between two dynasties. Now, now, you ask, uh, you must be thinking, what are those dynasties? Who, uh, why is this surname Gupta being added onto her original name, Prabhavati? Yes, I'm here to answer all your questions regarding that. Queen Prabhavati, or should I say Princess Prabhavati, was born as the daughter, only daughter to King Chandragupta II of Gupta dynasty. We all know how famous Gupta dynasty is and how brave the warriors of uh, Gupta dynasty are, isn't it? We never get to hear any queens or princesses from that dynasty. Always you know, get to hear all the brave stories of the uh, various kings and uh, princes. Isn't it? But this is one lady about whom the annals of uh, we, we are forced to uh, sit up and uh, take a note of uh, from Gupta dynasty as the latest uh, excavations that are happening currently in India are giving us more and more stories about her. Interesting, isn't it? Come on, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about her before uh, we get into the real story. Prabhavati Gupta was born as the daughter of Chandragupta and uh, during her childhood in the internal uh, women quarters of the Chandragupta uh, capital fort, she is known as a fierce independent princess who is uh, I mean, known for her quick wit and determination. And unfortunately, despite all the positive uh, qualities that surround her, she is also used as a one of the positions, uh, the prize positions of the Gupta dynasty to, uh, uh, so that they can uh, use her to expand their territories, gain more control over the uh, entire India and establish their political alliances. Yeah, we all know that in history, most of the marriages, whether it's for boy or for the girl, marriages used to happen mainly because of the political alliances, isn't it? And she was, uh, she also had to, Face the same thing. Prabhavati Gupta got married to Rudrasena II of Vakataka dynasty. Vakataka dynasty, yes. We would have heard about this dynasty in little uh, uh, a bit uh, in our history books as we didn't really read much about them. Um, maybe we would have heard about the wars between uh, Vakataka dynasty and uh, the Krishna Devarayas or some of the Kadamba dynasty or even Guptas, in fact. For Guptas, during uh, 375 AD, that uh, day, most of the people, uh, I mean, uh, Vakatakas have become a thorn in their side because they, I mean, when, if at all, if they want to expand their kingdom, they have to go and wage a war with Vakatakas. And Vakataka kings are really brave and uh, courageous enough to go and uh, hit the mighty army of the Gupta empires. So uh, our king, Chandragupta II, decided to forge a political marriage alliance with Vakataka dynasty so that they will not become thorns to him, but they can help him in his political aspirations. Wonderful idea at that point of time. So he got Parvati Gupta, Prabhavati Gupta married to Rudrasena II of Vakataka dynasty in 380 Imagine now, she is born to a prince of a higher stature when compared to Vakataka king. So, She's moving, when she's moving from maternal home to her uh, in-law's house or uh, the uh, court, courts of her own uh, husband, what are the feelings that, that would have gone in her mind, isn't it? She must be worried whether she will be getting the same treatment or the royal treatment there in the new uh, uh, home. Will she be getting all the luxuries or not? What will be her role? So... That is the reason why Chandragupta had given her a huge entourage of people, may, uh, pa palace maids, who, uh, women friends, and a lot of other people, 
and send them along with uh, her to the new court her, uh, where her husband was ruling at that point of time. That is the Nagardhan court uh, near to current Nagpur area. We all know that Vakatakas were actually uh, mainly concentrated in the Vidarbha region at that point of time, right? In around 375, 380, 80. But uh, so she, uh, Prabhati Gupta, slowly got settled in Nagadan Fort and was started having little good time along with her husband. But unfortunately, her happiness was only there for a uh, very short time. Her happiness is short lived. Reason being, our Rudrasina too had passed away within 10 uh, after 10 years of the marriage. In the meantime itself, she was blessed with three sons and a daughter by Rudra Sena too. And the sons are Divakar Sena, Pravara Sena and Damodar Sena. So just because she is the main queen of Vakarika uh, dynasty, she couldn't let the four slip out of her hands because there is no apparent ruler for the Vakarika dynasty, right? As Divakar Sena at that time has not yet reached the appropriate age to become a king. So what she did is, she has uh, done the coronation for Divakara Sena, saying that he is the heir apparent for Vakaraka dynasty. And then she started ruling her, that Vakaraka empire as the queen regent. And then she started taking help of her father, Chandragupta II, for um, more on the political administration side, to war strategies and all. We already know that she also has small kings, uh, kids, right? So who is going to take care of her kids if uh, she has to get in, get busy in the uh, royal duties? All these things will be, uh, uh, I'll be telling you a little later. Uh, but before that, I want to tell you an important character of uh, Prabhavati Gupta. When she started ruling Vakataka Empire as a queen regent, she retained her surname, the original surname from her uh, maternal home, which is Gupta. She never changed her surname as Prabhavati Sena, like how her husband Divaka, Rudra Sena too, or Divakar Sena, Hajan Divakar Sena, Pravar Sena, Zamadar Sena are there having. So in the places which she has issued uh, uh, to indicate her re regency over the Vakaraka Empire, indicate that uh, you can see the Prabhavati Gupta uh, return here on the front side of it, whereas on the back side, she has introduced herself as the daughter of the great ruler Chandragupta II, and she's got married, she's the main queen of Rudrasena II from Vakataka Empire, and ma queen mother of the, the um, Livaka Sena, who is the heir apparent for the Vakataka Empire. She never said that she's alone, but she's given all the history. Imagine at that point of time, the women were not given enough role and importance. They were not even visible beyond the royal um, uh, um, chambers, isn't it? So that is the reason why she would have used her father's name as her introductory, this thing, and her husband's name, then her son's name. But still, even amidst all that confusion, she still retained her originality because she's using her Prabhavati Gupta as uh, her original name. And she also used her Godra. You all know what Godra for Indians means, right? Godra is the place from where we actually has originated. So anybody in a traditional form, if you want to introduce yourself, you first tell what is your Godra, who are the originating forefathers for that Godra, and uh, you belong to which generation of that Godra. That is how the traditional form, Indian form of introduction of people happens in the ancient India. So she still retained her original Godra and she passed on that Godra to her um, kids as well. I mean, I think it's a revolutionary idea at that point of time itself. Nowadays, it's quite common for people like me to retain my original surname because that makes my life easier in the uh, workplace. Uh, all the office, my all my legal documents are there with my original surname, right? So I retain the same thing with all the ladies, most of the ladies, right? Not, not many people actually go and change their surname these days. But this practice has already started by her in 380 AD. Imagine the time, right? Am amazing woman, isn't it? So now, when she started taking the control of Vakataka Empire, she started expanding it. And during her time, actually Vakataka Empire, which was just hitherto uh, isolated or concentrated on the Vidarpa region, got expanded all the way to Arabian Sea in the western side, 
to the Tungabhadra banks of Tungabhadra River on the south side and to the areas of Chhattisgarh and the areas of Madhya Pradesh. Uh, so she's expanded her uh, kingdom in all the four directions. She also helped her father in the war strategies and the military administration when he was waging the war with the Gujarat uh, Saka uh, kingdom. And that is how Chandragupta too had won actually in, the, in that war. Now, you may, as I already gave you the hint, right? Who has taken care of her babies at that point of time when she's busy with the royal duties? She has a very good helping hand there because it, the story says that Mahakali uh, Kavi Kalidasa is a part of the Ender Age, which uh, went along with Prab uh, Queen Prabhavati Gupta uh, after she uh, got married to Rudrasena II. So that this. Um, Mahakavi Kalidasa stayed at Nandi, Nandi, sorry, Nagarjan Fort, Nagarjan Fort, and then uh, he took care of bringing up uh, the uh, kids of uh, Prabhavati Gupta. And that is it. And he has taken help of different uh, gurus and acharyas at that point of time to teach them all the royal rec skills required for uh, managing kingdom. Along with that, he also ta uh, taught them the, uh, about the literature and he inculcated the love for literature. And it is also to, uh, I mean, noted that the famous uh, book uh, written by Mahakavi Kalasa, the Megadur, was written on the um, hilltop of Ramgar, Ramteka Hills where we could find a cluster of uh, temples now uh, in uh, in uh, now and uh, the reason and these are the temples which have become uh, the primary source of information about prabhavati gupta to us dr apj ap jamkedkar is the main person who uh, led the excavation teams along with his fellow archaeological team and he found an inscription be behind the keval narsimha uh, swami idol in the Keval Narsimha temple found on the Ramtek temple's cluster about how Prabhavati Gupta had ruled the Vakataka Empire at that point of time. All the, uh, the way she introduced herself, the different coins which she issued, how she has built Vishnu temples, Shiva temples, and all that stuff. And there is recent excavations from 1998 onwards at Nandivadana, hmm, Side near Nagpur, Ram, uh, and then Ram, Ram Tech Temple clusters, and even the Mansar. Mansar is also again another important and interesting agricultural site, which is nearer to near Nagpur area once again. And now you might be asking, what is Mansar? Mansar is again the capital of King Pravarsena. You must be wondering why I'm talking about Pravarsena when Divakar Sena is the heir apparent. Unfortunately, by the time Divakar Sena reached 60 or 17 years, he had died of unknown illness, and then her second son, Pravarasena, had become the next king uh, of Vakataka Empire. And Prabhavati Gupta got retired from the royal duties and started advising Pravarasena on the political administration front as and when required. Another source of information about her and her reign could be found even in the Ajanta Caves, which have been built by Vakataka Empire. And these are a couple of the copper coins issued by Prabhavati Gupta, which were found in Nandivadana excavation sites, which shows in the uh, conch and the uh, female symbol saying that she's the uh, female, one of only one kind of female ruler at that point of time. So that's all, friends, for today's story. Amazing, isn't it? When two powerful dynasties, like Gupta Empire on one side, Vakataka Empire on the other side, where none of the ladies were seen or heard in any of the history books, there is a single lady who has become the bridge, joined both Vakataka Empire and Gupta Empire, and worked hard for expanding both the empires. But what happened? Maybe because the powerful male rulers who had succeeded her, her history got hidden. They didn't want uh, others to know that a woman had actually ruled their uh, kingdom for almost 20 years. Again, historians have different views here, saying like she ruled only for 10 years, some people say she ruled for 15 years, some people say she ruled for 20 years. Whatever may be the time period of her ruling, what I really uh, admire in her is her determination to come out of the tragic situations that uh, had forced her to take the brave steps that are required to maintain, not only maintain Vakataka Empire, but also expand it and keep her subjects happy. So that's all, my dear friends, for today. Meet you with an, an interesting story tomorrow from Mommy Show Musings. Bye-bye.